Down Bad, written by Tony Adiemi. Interior, Miles' bedroom, Dawn. We open on a sequined club dress thrown messily over the armchair in an otherwise well-kept bedroom. A pair of pasties and Calvin Klein boxers lay at the foot of the bed. On the nightstand, a pair of hoops, a clutch purse slightly ajar, feel an ID, credit card, phone, and an engagement ring. The first hints of light peek through several openings in the curtains, illuminating one figure in bed. Nia stirs as the light hits her eyes. She starts to turn the other way, but her phone vibrates. On Nia's phone screen, 6 a.m., reminders, take BC pill. Nia springs up. Fuck, fuck. She unlocks her phone and navigates to Lyft. Before a driver is confirmed, it dies. She frantically looks on the other side of the bed for a charger to no avail. Awesome. She jumps out of bed, spots her dress on the other side of the room, and marches towards the armchair right as the door opens. Miles walks in shirtless, balancing two mugs of coffee with ease. Yo, I'm glad you're up. Oh! Bye. Um, hello? Ever heard of knocking? Uh, as a matter of fact, I have, but this is, uh, my room. Well, I am currently unclothed, so if you would be ever so kind to lend me your room, I need to get changed. Oh, so now we're being shy. A faint grin flashes across Nia's face, forcing her to bite her lip to cover it up. Miles smiles at catching her off guard before placing one mug on the dresser and backing out through the door. I'll be downstairs if you'd like to join me once you're properly clothed, uh, but you can also take one of my hoodies if you don't want to. Nope. I'm good. Thanks. Uh, what I have is great. Miles looks dubiously at the dress and then back up at Nia, who is all but pleading for him to leave. With a smirk, he exits. <sighs> Smooth. Nia scans the room for her other belongings. She walks over to the foot of the bed, kicks the boxes off her faces, and picks them up before heading to the bedside table. Where the fuck is my underwear? Nia flips over the comforter to look, accidentally knocking her clutch onto the floor in the process. Her belongings fall out, and she awkwardly bends over to collect them. She pauses to fiddle the engagement ring between her thumb and index finger. She encloses the ring between her pasties and shoves them deep into her clutch. She double checks to make sure it's locked. Cut to title card. Cut to interior, Miles' kitchen, early morning. Nia walks down the stairs slowly. Miles is grabbing a carton of eggs from the fridge while whistling to the song. Hey, yo, uh, how do you like your eggs? I was about to do a quick little scramble. Uh, actually, I'm good. I don't usually eat in the morning. Or, uh, drink coffee, it looks like. More of a tea person myself. Coffee makes me super jittery. You? Jittery? No. Mm. I would love to stay and uh, shoot the shit with you, but I really have to get going. Do you have a phone charger I could borrow? I couldn't find one. Yeah, yeah, let me just go grab one in my room. Interior, living room, continuous. Miles jogs up the stairs. Nia lingers a second before making her way over to the living room to inspect the record player. She peruses his impressive collection and stops on a Donna Summer album. Her face softens. The sound of Miles' footsteps snaps Nia out of it, and she scuttles back towards the kitchen. Miles walks in with a charger in one hand and Nia's unwanted coffee in the other. Interior, Miles' kitchen, continuous. Here you go. Uh, it's a little wireless charger, so you just like place your phone on the pad and then... Uh... Miles walks over to the sink and pours out her coffee. Well, is it really wireless then? What? I, I mean, I just saw you plug a wire into the wall, so it feels like calling this a wireless charger would just be incorrect. <laughs> yeah, but the, the phone itself isn't connected to a wire, so... Nia places her phone on the pad. Okay, tr true, but now I can't even pick it up to use it while it's charging. It just seems pretty dumb to me. Miles walks back over towards Nia, stops a few inches away, and leans on the kitchen island with his arms crossed. You know what? You're right. <laughs> that is pretty dumb. The sexual tension intensifies. Nia quickly breaks eye contact by pretending to check her phone's battery status. Miles walks over to the TV stand, coffee in hand, and grabs his rolling tray before settling on the couch. Nia stays glued to her phone. Miles begins to grind weed. So, you smoke? Well, what gave it away? Uh, would you like to join me? Never said no to wake and bake. Nia glances one more time at her still dead phone before heading to the couch. 
just when I was starting to think. Never find a morning activity to agree on. Interior, living room, contiguous. Nia pointedly sits on the opposite side of the couch. Miles tries to stop her, but cuts himself off once she is sitting. What? <sighs> nothing. Nothing. Okay, well, it's obviously not nothing, so don't be weird and just tell me. I, uh, I just, I think you're sitting on something. Nia shoots up and sees her underwear half wedged into the crack of the couch. Her eyes widen in horror. Cut to flashback, interior, Miles' living room, the night before. Nia and Miles stumble into the living room laughing. Miles leans Nia against the wall and begins to kiss her neck. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, you're wearing your outside shoes inside the house. Like, who raised you? Nia kicks off her heels. Shut up, I forgot. They start kissing. Uh... Will you help me? I think it's stuck. Miles ignores her request and pins her down onto the couch. Leave it on. Nia's eyes widen as Miles goes underneath her dress, takes off her underwear with his mouth, and tosses it behind him. Cut to interior, living room, early morning, back to present. Nia quickly grabs the underwear and stomps over to the kitchen to put it inside her clutch. Miles keeps rolling while trying to hide his grin. Oh, you're just eating this up, aren't you? Nia sits back down. Miles licks the glue of the joint while making direct eye contact with Nia. She squirms and crosses her legs. <laughs> nah, I was trying to eat some eggs, but you vetoed that, so, you know. <laughs> but, uh, we can, uh, heat up some greens instead, though. Sheesh. Tough crowd. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just a little tense, okay? Nia looks over to see if her phone is lit up. Unable to tell, she turns back around and grabs the joint and lighter from Miles, ensuring that their hands do not touch. Thanks for this. Nia lights up the joint with a deep inhale and an even larger exhale. She takes another quick puff before passing it back to Miles. So, what do you do? Like, for a living, I mean, this place is pretty nice. Uh, real estate, and uh, a couple of little like side hustles. Oh, of course. Why of course? Because I can totally see you walk into a house and being all suave and selling the wives on the idea of a happy home and the husbands on the idea of fucking their wives on the kitchen island. Hmm. That's a uh, pretty heteronormative of you. Oh, come on. You know what I mean. Sexuality of this hypothetical couple aside, I'm just saying I can totally see you wooing some person into the idea that a regular, regular house could be their dream home. I mean, uh, if you really want to get into it, uh, we had to move around a lot for my mom's job when I was a kid. and My parents got fucked over by realtors, appraisers, you name it. Uh, solely for being black and just trying to get a house. So uh, I just wanted to be able to do that for them and my community without any of the other bullshit, you know, getting in the way because it's already a stressful enough process. Nia, for the first time the entire morning, looks disarmed. So uh, yeah, if a dream home or a fuckable kitchen countertop is what someone wants, then yeah, I'm going to find it and I'm going to sell it to them. Uh, you, uh, you want me to roll another? No, sorry. I mean, no, no thanks. I'm, I'm good. I actually think I'm pretty high. And if I'm being completely honest, feeling like an asshole. Ah, finally, some honesty. What? <laughs> what do you mean by that? She nervously fiddles with her ringless ring finger. I mean, uh... From my point of view, it, it just feels like your guard's been up all morning, you know? And Just to be clear, I'm not trying to, like, keep dating you or anything like that. If that's no, what? No. I, I didn't think you were trying to date me. I just... I... I just... I'm sorry. I have to get that. Nia jumps up and heads to the kitchen counter. Interior, Miles' kitchen, continuous. On Nia's phone, the notifications read, Snapchat, Jewel sent a snap. Voicemail from Jared. Candy Crush, a friend sent you a life. Swipe to play now. 
Missed call from Jared. Is uh, is everything all right in there? Um, uh, yeah. There's just not a lot of drivers in the area right now. Nia grabs her clutch in one hand and phone in the other before sulking back into the living room. Interior, Miles' living room, continuous. Uh, my driver's dropping someone else off, but I think they'll be here in like less than three minutes, so I should probably just wait outside. Ah, saved by the bell. You know, I could, I could tell you were just about to start opening up to me. Uh, let me walk you out. Uh, are you sure you don't want like a jacket or sweatpants or something? Like I got some really elderly neighbors and I don't want them to go into cardiac arrest when they, uh, when you walk out my door, you know. <laughs> You've got jokes, Miles. I'll, I'll give you that. Once again, thanks, but no thanks. Nia walks towards the front door with Miles in tow. Interior, Miles' front hallway, continuous. Hey, but actually, thank you for having me over and attempting to make me breakfast, but succeeding in getting me out. The pleasure was all mine. Um, well, Nia, I have a feeling I will literally never see you again, so uh, I hope you have a great life. Doubt it. Nia exits the front door. Cut to car door slam. Interior lift mid morning. The lift driver glances at Nia in the rearview mirror. Going to 520 Wilshire? Uh, yeah, thanks. Nia buckles her seatbelt, takes out her phone, and starts checking notifications. On Nia's phone, Jules sent a snap. Nia taps on the message a video selfie of Jules in workout clothes begins to play out loud. I have to be the only bitch making it to Barry's the morning after going out. But this ass won't get fat otherwise. <laughs> the lift driver glances back in the review mirror with a polite smile. She replies in the Snapchat chat, only you, babe. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. It sounds like this is a nice day. The second sentence of the driver trails off as Nia opens iMessage and sees Jared's text. Jared, 10.13 p.m. Know you're going out with Jules. Let me know when you make it home. Love you. Jared, 5.21 a.m. Heading to the airport. Call text me when you get this. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Come again? Oh, no. No, it was, it was nothing. I was just saying it seems like you had a fun night with your friends. Oh, yeah. Yes. It was a friend's birthday, actually. So we just had like a small girls night thing. Nia starts replying sorry phone died until she remembers Jared also left a voicemail. She puts the phone up to her ear, lowers the volume, and glances at the driver to ensure that she's out of overhearing range. Hey babe, I know it's early, but you didn't call or text last night, so I just wanted to see if you're okay. Uh, it went straight to voicemail when I called, so I assume your phone is dead? You should really be using that charging case I got you for Christmas last year. Anyway, uh, I gotta go. My plane's about to take off. It's about time because one of the crew members was late for only God knows what. Ooh, ooh, they are asking us to turn on airplane mode. All right, gotta go. Love you. The voicemail ends abruptly. Nia, looking nauseous, rolls down the window. She opens her clutch and splits apart the faces, revealing her engagement ring. Is, is it the one up here? Uh, yeah, the blue building on the left. Nia slips the ring on her hand and out of sight from the driver. The car pulls up to the curb. Nia exits. Uh, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. You too, sweetie. Nia runs up the stairs as much as her heels will allow. Cut to interior, Jared and Nia's apartment, continuous. Nia unlocks the door and walks inside her apartment. The walls have pictures of her and Jared. A lot of his belongings are scattered on various surfaces. She hangs her house keys on the hook, takes off her heels, and places them in the hallway she rent. She sinks to the floor using the front door as support. She curls up into a ball and starts inhaling and exhaling deeply. It is unclear if she's crying. Hey Siri, flight time from Kansas City to LA. The average flight time from Kansas City, Missouri to Los Angeles, California is three hours and 22 minutes. We see her do mental math to figure out how much time she has before he lands. She takes one more deep breath and springs into action. Interior, Jared and Nia's living room continuous. She walks into the living room to turn on the speaker. 
She launches the Spotify app and shuffles Donna Summer's Bad Girls album before turning towards the cleaning supplies. Interior, Jared and Nia's living room, continuous, montage. Nia strips her dress off and slips into an old t-shirt and shorts. She throws the dress in the laundry bin before emptying the entire basket into the washer. She folds the blankets on the couch, props up the pillows, and removes various clutter from the services. Everything has a place, and Nia is determined to put it there. She moves around the room with precision and focus, too swift to have time for any lingering thoughts. She plugs in the vacuum and maneuvers it around the living room carpet. Toot toot! Beep beep! Cut to interior, Jared and Nia's kitchen later. Nia begins sweeping. She intermittently uses the broom as a microphone to sing parts of the song. Bad girls, talking about sad girls. Sad girls, talking about bad. Call from Jules Tongue Emoji. Nia leans the broom against the table before picking up her phone. Hey, one second, let me put on my AirPods, I'm cleaning. Interior, Jules' bedroom, early afternoon. Jules paints her toenails on her desk chair. Okay, look at us go. Both of us having productive mornings. Me working now. Intercut, phone conversation. The sound cuts off briefly while the phone connects to the AirPods. And you doing chores and shit. Like, okay, girl boss is in the making. Did you end up drinking more after y'all left? Your snap made it seem like it. Okay, so I swear, I was actually planning not to. Mm, sure you were. Okay, rude. We ended up going to Tao because Maya knew the bouncers working that night, so we didn't have to wait in line. When we finally got inside, the dance floor was a whack, so we headed to the bar, and these two guys started buying me and Maya drinks. And you know, one thing led to another. Maya didn't really hit it off with her guy, but I hit it off with mine. Nia begins to load the dishwasher. Oh God, spill the tea. What's his name? What does he look like? Terrence. He wasn't super tall, but he was taller than me. Good dancer. No, honestly, great dancer. Like I haven't danced like that in a while. Mm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we made out a little, he got my number, but we didn't like hook up. So the dry spell continues. <laughs> Your dry spell has been three weeks. Okay. I did not realize you were keeping track of my pussy appointments, but noted. Anyway, enough about me. Are you feeling better? What? Like, are you good? Did you make it home okay? I mean, obviously you did if you're clean. Yeah, up. I'm fine. Why do you ask? I mean, no one really saw you after you said you were going to the bathroom. The last I heard from you was your text letting me know you were going home early. Nia drops the plate in the sink and goes to the counter to grab her phone from the charger. She scrolls through her messages with Jules to remember what she wrote. Uh, one sec. I can't hear you over the sound of the sink. Cut to flashback, exterior, ballet outside of nightclub. Nia is frantically typing a message on her phone. The text reads, Calling a lift home, got a little sick. Tell Maya I'll bring her gift to Tennis Tuesdays. Miles walks out through the door. Oof, it's a little, a little chilly out here. Here, for my coat. Uh, Nia quickly fixes her face while stuffing the phone in her phone. No, I'm good. I'm from Chicago. I can handle a little L.A. breeze. <laughs> oh, so you calling me soft? Well, damn, if the shoe fits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come on, Chicago, I insist. Miles stands in front of Nia and places his jacket over her shoulders, grazing her collarbone with his fingers. Her breath hitches. They look into each other's eyes until they're interrupted by. Here's your car, sir. Ma'am. The valet gestures to the open door, and Nia steps inside. She takes one last look at the club as if she might decide to go back inside, but the car door slams in her face. Cut to interior, Nia and Jared's kitchen, back to present day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. I just knew if I went home right then, I could most likely avoid the spins and a terrible hangover. And Jared actually comes back tonight. Jules so. waddles over to the fan in her room to help her nails dry. Oh, cute. You should have told us Jared was coming back today. We would have understood. Are y'all doing anything fun? Um, I'm not sure. Honestly, hopefully something low key. I mean, I'm still coming back too, you know? Yeah, I guess. But if my SO had to leave for work every week, I'd pounce on them immediately when they got back. But hey, that's just me. 
that's your dry spell talking. It's different when you've been dating forever. You and Jared have not been dating forever. It's been like, what, almost four years? And you've been engaged for like nine months of that. Jewel starts examining her butt in the mirror. Chelsea and I dated for like three years before we broke up. And even we still fuck sometimes. That's because y'all are toxic. Uh, points have been made, but it makes the sex way hotter, so I'm not complaining. Jared and I have hot sex too. It's just, it feels like, like forced? How so? Nia starts scrubbing the counters hard. At this point, the house looks spotless. No, not like forced force. Like we don't plan when we are gonna fuck or anything weird like that, but he's gone consulting most Monday through Thursday, so it can only really happen on the weekends, but he's tired from flying and I'm tired from writing and I don't know, it just ends up feeling like a production or a, a last dress rehearsal. A dress rehearsal? Yeah. You know, it's like the last one before opening night of a play. It has the same expectation to get everything perfect like opening night has, but you have none of the adrenaline of a live audience and all of the exhaustion of every other time you've rehearsed it before. Even for you? That's weirdly specific. Nia, is everything all right? You seem off. Nia stopped scrubbing, which she had not realized she was doing so furiously. Jules. It's me. Of course, I'm fine. I'm just a little stressed. It's just the stress talking. You, you know how I get around end of quarter reviews. Yeah. Yep, I do. You can always talk to me if you need. And, and better than me, you can always talk to Jared. He loves you, Nini. And, and you two are like perfect together. You just need to spice it up. You know, I keep seeing IG ads for this new vibrator that has all- Oh, <laughs> I have to go get that. You're right though, Jules, thanks for talking me down. I haven't showered since yesterday and he's gonna be home soon, so I should probably get going. Talk later. That sounds good. Jules shoots up from the bed and starts gathering things from around the room. I gotta go too. My forgot her credit card at Tao, but claims she's too hungover, so I gotta go pick it up for her and drop it off. I really am the best friend. <laughs> Have fun with Jared tonight, whatever y'all end up doing. Thanks, bye. Bye. Nia hangs up the phone and puts it in her back pocket and sinks into the couch face down. She sits there in silence for a second before grabbing a pillow and muffling a short but mighty yell. <gasps> Afterwards, she sits up and heads to the bathroom. She turns on the shower and begins to take off her clothes until she hears her phone go off. She peers over at it. The text reads from Jared, landed. Cut to interior, Jared and Nia's living room, late afternoon. Nia sits on the couch while with her legs crossed to prop up her laptop. She is wearing an oversized sweatshirt and a pair of shorts. Her braids are held up in a bonnet. The laptop is open to a Word doc that is blank except for the title, Seven Ways to Wear Ugg Boots All Year Round. She launches the Spotify app on the TV and starts scrolling through her music. Unable to decide what to pick, she gets frustrated and turns it off. She pulls out her phone, checks the time, and begins to scroll through Twitter. A few seconds later, she hears outside her door. She freezes. Jared knocks. Nia jumps up to unlock it. Jared knocks again, right as Nia opens it. He's carrying one too many things. Sorry, I didn't have enough hands to unlock it myself. It's okay. Jared tries to maneuver around Nia to place some of his things on the shoe rack bench. She doesn't realize she's in the way. Do you mind? Oh, so, sorry. Uh, let me take something from you. Nia grabs his backpack and keys so he can set his suitcase and other belongings down. Thanks. Jared leans in to kiss Nia. The backpack creates a barrier between their bodies. Oh, how I've missed you. Jared continues to take off his shoes and place his belongings around the room. The place starts to look sloppy again. Uh, this case is so stuffy. And Brian was out the first half of the week, meaning I had to lead all the client meetings and get this. What? Kansas City doesn't meet the distance or flight time requirements to upgrade me to business. Oh, that's yeah. uh, As if I already, I was thrilled to be flying to Missouri every week. Now I have to potentially do it with Economy Plus. And Brian said he would talk to HR, but they always side with corporate on these things. That sucks, babe. Yeah, I know. But hey, in a couple of months, I should be coming right up on that promotion, so it won't be an issue for too much longer. And 
Managers fly business, no matter what, so. Jared plops down on the couch and pats the space behind him, gesturing for Nia to sit down. Anyway, how are you? Oh, how was you not out with Jules? He grabs her legs and places them on his lap. He begins stroking them. Ah, uh, I'm good. I'm good. Um, uh, you know, the usual. Quarterly reviews are coming up in a few weeks, so you know how I get. Yeah, yep, I do. I mean, it's just writing listicles and celebrity fuck pieces. How terrible can it be? All right. Ouch. Oh, come on. You know, I, I didn't mean it like that. I, I love your writing. I was just phrasing it how you usually I do. I know. I know. Yeah. I'm just anxious because only two of my articles made print this season. I think Ji Yoon is getting promoted, so that means the associate editor position is up for grabs. And I... Anyway. It'll be fine. Whatever, I'm just overreacting. Yeah, no, no, it'll be okay, all right? No need to prep for doomsday just yet. Oh, what about your, uh, your knife? Nia pulls her legs back and folds herself up inside the sweatshirt while hugging her arms around her knees. Uh, I mean, there's nothing really to tell. <laughs> you know, Jules is good, same old, same old. Yeah, I mean, it must have been one hell of a night if, you know, you drank that much. <laughs> It wasn't just Jules that her friend Maya from work actually came out with us too, which was which was cool. Oh fun. Oh, a little GNO. Where'd you guys go? Jared gets up to grab a beer from the fridge. First we went out to dinner for sushi, which is where I thought the night was supposed to end, but Jules kept insisting on taking sake bombs. Mm -hmm. So we ended up going to this like speakeasy bar. I think it was called the Blind Barber. I don't know, my physical therapist recommended it to her, but it was cool, it was cool. Um, and yeah, and then I think they went to Tao and I just came home. I wasn't feeling great. Oh, oh, well, speakeasy is right up my alley. Yeah, we should go soon. And sorry you weren't feeling well. Uh, I still wish you would have called or texted. Nia fiddles with her ring. I know, that was my bad. I came home and I had the spins and I went right to bed and, and then my phone died in the middle of the night so I didn't even wake up until like mid-morning and by that yeah. point you were already on the flight. No, happens to the best of us. We don't have the privilege of youth on our side anymore. He wraps his arm around Nia's shoulder and kisses her on the temple. So, how are you feeling now? I'm good. A lot better. The shower helped. Honestly, I'm feeling a little hungry. Could order some food, watch, watch some TV if you're down. Oh, no, definitely down for food, but can we please, please go out? I've been eating room service in my hotel all alone this week because we never get off from the client side in time to make it to the restaurants. I mean, not that Missouri has the finest cuisine, but. I don't know. It feels like it'd be kind of hard to get a reservation this late on a Friday. Come on, we can just binge 90 day. Would you be mad if I said I already made one before my plane took off? Well, I'm in Nagi, 6.30. She looks down at her phone. It's 5.36 p.m. Well, then I guess the decision is already made. <laughs> Let's do it. Jared sets his can down, squeezes Nia, and pecks her a couple times on the cheek. Nia reaches for their rolling tray. Can we at least smoke before we go? Uh, no, you go ahead. I want to hop in the shower, but I'll be ready by six. Jared saunters off to the room while pulling out his phone. Nia puts the rolling tray back untouched. She looks sick. Jared pokes his head from the bedroom door to ask. Wait, do you want to drive or should I? Nia quickly fixes her face. Do you mind? Oh, not at all, my love. Jared disappears back into the room. Nia chugs what's left of his drink. Cut to exterior ramen restaurant night. Jared comes around to the passenger side of the car to open Nia's door. She reaches for his hand and steps out. Thank you. Of course, my lady. Uh, let me just check on the reservation. I'll be right back. Jared enters the restaurant. Nia looks unsure of what to do. She stares blankly at herself in the reflection of the restaurant's window. A slight breeze goes by and we see Nia wrap her arms around herself. After a few seconds, she looks down to the ground, hanging her head in shame. Jared peeks his head out. Hey. Hey, they say our table is... He notices her position. He steps towards her. 
Hey, baby, what's wrong? Are you feeling okay? He begins to take off his jacket and wrap it around her. Hey, I, I told you to bring a card again or something. September in SoCal can be deceptively chilly. Hey, everything good? You're worrying me. Nia looks tormented. For a fleeting second, it feels like she's about to tell him. I... A couple exiting the restaurant interrupts her train of thought. One partner says a joke that makes them both start giggling. They hold each other's hands and walk off huddled closely for warmth. I should have worn a coat. <laughs> You're right. Thanks for this. Should we go inside? After you. Cut to interior table at ramen restaurant, 6.30 p.m. Nia and Jared are seated at a private table in the corner. Yeah, I was thinking of ordering some appetizers. I'm starving. Anything catching your eye? Uh, the gyoza looks good. Uh, I mean, I've actually had it here before. It's good, but it's not like, wow, you know. Uh, the chashu rice is what they're known for, though. The waiter approaches and pours water into their glasses. <clears throat> Hello, welcome to Ramen Nagi. Is this your first time dining with us? Uh, no, I've, I've been here a bunch. Nia, I think once or twice? I've been here a few times. <laughs> well, uh, I'm happy to go through the menu if you need. It's pretty simple. I can also just go ahead and get some drinks started for you. Uh, why don't we do uh, a bottle of the Nia, red or white? Either is fine. I probably won't drink much. A uh, bottle of the 2018 El Dorado Zinfandel and uh, Chashu rice to start, please. <laughs> Sounds good. I'll be right back. So, is there uh, anything you want to do this weekend in particular or just resume our roles of being couch potatoes? I like our couch potato weekends. Oh, no, no, me, me too. I, it wasn't a dig. I was just, I don't know. I feel like we haven't done anything in a minute. You're not wrong. Ooh, there's a new exhibit at the Getty that could be cool. Or Jules has been trying to get me to go hiking with her for like a month now that it's a little cooler. He reaches the silence here, but it buzzes a second time. So I was, I was thinking that that could... Uh, 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 yeah, the, the get it could be nice. Um, uh, sorry, Brian's flight got delayed, so he's asking me to send him something. Just one second. No, no worries. The waiter comes back with a bottle of wine and the appetizer. Here is your chashu rice and the wine. The waiter uncorks the bottle and pours some wine into each of their glasses. Uh, thank you. Are we uh, ready to order or should I give you a few more minutes? Yeah, we are ready to order. Um, <clears throat> I will have the Black King ramen base with uh, thick noodles, uh, shashu belly, and uh, extra cabbage. Uh, Nia, should I order two or? Yes. No, I mean, no, I'll have the same, but with a soft boiled egg instead of cabbage. Thank you. Of course, I'll put that order in right away. Jared begins to split the chashu rice between his and Nia's plate. I hate when waiters don't write orders down. Like, I don't go into client meetings without designating an analyst to take notes. So, like, I hope for his sake that he gets the order right because I will start a scene. I'm Jay, that hungry. Stop. It's his job and it's just a small menu. It's fine. Jared begins eating, Nia picks at her plate. Mmm. Mmm. No, that is better than I remember. Mmm. I guess anything tastes good after the food I had this week. Do you like it? Yeah. It's yum. Mm. The restaurant is nice, too. I feel like they've redone it since the last time I was here. When was that? I think with you, it must have been right after we got engaged because we came here with my brother, but that was before he moved here. Mm, mm, yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> That's right. Actually, funny that you uh, you brought that up. Um, well, I guess I was asked the question that brought it up, but I, 
and it's not like haha funny, but um, it's 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 a good segue. Segue to what? <clears throat> well, Nia, uh, I know it's been a busy year since you moved from freelance to staff writer, and me being up for this promotion has, I don't know, taken a lot of time away from us. Nia takes a large bite of food to hide the panic look on her face. And uh, I don't want to speak for you or for us, but I don't know, lately things have felt distant. <coughs> been a little hard we both got used to working remotely for so long and I feel like at least when I was still freelance I could sometimes tag along for your work trips but I don't know if that's all it is camera pan to show her fidgeting with ring under table I actually need to tell I you I was something. actually going to say the same unsure if who should speak first he grabs Nia's hands again and continues. Nia, we have been together for almost four years and engaged for almost a year of that. And I know it was initially me who wanted to hold off on the wedding planning and to focus on work, but... Nia's face goes blank. I think we should stop beating around the bush. What bush? <laughs> What are you trying to say? I think it's time. Time for what? To set a date. I want us to set a date for our wedding. I'm sorry, did you say you wanted cabbage? Cut to black. <laughs> <laughs> you, almost made, you almost made me laugh so many times. We open on a weekend club dress. <laughs> 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 uh, hey Siri, flight time from Kansas. Kansas City, Missouri to Los Angeles. Siri's psychic. I was like, I didn't even ask the question so yet. Sorry. So, is there... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to take my life. <laughs> Whoever says it first gets the part. <laughs>